Welcome back. Secretary Pompeo is headed to the Middle East this Tuesday. Right now, National Security Advisor John Bolton is in Israel. Secretary of State is headed to the region later this week. Tuesday, he kicks off his Mideast trip. Bolton says a U.S. withdrawal from Syria is pending and insurances from Turkey. All of this after President Trump said that he plans to pull U.S. troops out of Syria. Bringing in right now Texas Republican Congressman Mac Thornberry. He is the ranking member of the House Armed Services Committee. Sir, it's good to have you on the program this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Thank you, Maria. What is the message to the Middle East after the president said he's pulling troops out of Syria? Well, there was a lot of concern in the Middle East, uh, partly because uh, we have not completely finished uh, eliminating ISIS, partly because the Kurds, who have been doing a lot of the fighting with us and for us, have been our allies, and if we pull the rug on them, everybody else is wondering if we're going to pull the rug on others as well. And thirdly, it, it pretty much turns Syria over to Iran. And that's more dangerous for Israel. It's more dangerous for all the Gulf states. So, so the initial uh, uh, announcement by the president caused a lot of concern. Now, uh, Ambassador Bolton this morning has walked back some of that initial concern. But uh, there's still a lot of worry that if you let up the pressure on terrorist groups, whether they're in Syria, Afghanistan, or Yemen, they can spring back to life very quickly and threaten us here at home. So is, is the administration, do you think, pushing back on this idea of total withdrawal, given the fact that you do have all of these concerns that it, it will take a very short amount of time for ISIS to regroup once the Americans yeah, walk I away? No, you're exactly right. Ambassador Bolton this morning said that it's going to be more conditions-based, that we're just going to withdraw from part of the country. We'll leave some uh, folks in a key location that's a supply line from Iran into Syria. So I think they're still working through the details, trying to reassure folks. But I would be concerned about putting put too much stock into promises from Turkey that they're not going to attack the Kurds. We know what Erdogan's attitude towards them really is. Well, that's exactly right. So, you know, you've got John Bolton out there saying, well, we're going to withdraw once it's, you know, this is conditional once we know for sure that, that Turkey is going to be there. And we're trusting Turkey now about this. I mean, what is it going to take for you to have trust that, in fact, it is okay to walk away? Um, I don't know that I have that trust. Uh, and, and partly it's because of Turkey and the Kurds. But in part, it's because we saw what happened in 2011. Al-Qaeda in Iraq was defeated. Obama pulled out of Iraq, and they sprung back to life and occupied an enormous territory, became the most serious terrorist threat that the world has faced. So the number one lesson to me of the last 17 years is you got to keep the pressure on. And if you uh, relax that pressure, terrorists will spring back and threaten us here at home. We can't, we can't do that. So was it a mistake to say we're pulling out of Syria then? Yes, yes. I, I think it was a mistake. It worried our allies. It encouraged our enemies. And I think the administration now is trying to backtrack from uh, a blanket withdrawal and trying to mitigate some of the adverse consequences. Who are our allies in terms of making sure that the, the, the situation is safe, even as there is a real troop withdrawal plan in place? The mission may, may be the same, but the approach is clearly different. Yeah, it is, and, and different allies in the region have their own interests. The, the, I think the key lesson from what's happened in Syria is that Americans don't have to do the fighting, but we have to be there advising, sometimes support, having air support. That's what has been so successful. And, and make no mistake, the last two years, we have been very successful in beating back ISIS. And I think the president deserves a lot of credit for that success because he took the shackles off of our military. And they've done a lot of good work. But that job will not be finished forever. We have to at least have some presence to keep the pressure on. Let me ask you and switch gears uh, on, on this border wall fight, because the Democrats say that they want border security, but they will not vote for a wall and they will not uh, provide the money that the president is asking. Where does this head next, sir? What, what is your take on all of this? Well, for, if it were a normal controversy and, and one side wanted zero and one side wanted five, you would meet somewhere in the middle. 
uh, for years, way before President Obama was elected. The Border Patrol experts said you need a combination of things. You need physical barriers, you need people, and you need technology. All three of them. So I was struck this week when uh, Speaker Pelosi said this is a moral issue. We already have some sort of barrier across 30% of the border. To go to 40% is a moral issue. It just tells me this is politics. Uh, and 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 the d dis disappointing thing is the country, the best interests of the country, do not seem to be the first consideration. It's all about political position. Well, how does she answer that? I mean, we already have a portion of the wall in place, as you say. So, 30% was immoral. The rest of it is the 30% of it was moral. The rest of it is immoral. Yeah, it, there is no answer. Or the other alternative is we ought to get rid of all border, or all physical security on the border. Right. Well, that doesn't make sense either. Yeah. This is political gamesmanship, and it needs to stop because the the, the country is less safe yeah. when you have open borders. Congressman, thank you very much.